That effort to reassure began at 10 past four, with the Treasury promising a fiscal plan on November the 23rd, including how they would ensure debt is falling as a share of GDP. Then, 20 minutes later, this from the Bank of England, a promise that they would not hesitate to change interest rates as necessary to return inflation to the 2% target sustainably in the medium term. The economic turbulence was being felt in a different way in Liverpool, where it was inspiring a new optimism in the Labour Party on the day at their annual conference that Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves delivered her speech. The Chancellor and Prime Minister, meanwhile, resemble two desperate gamblers in a casino, chasing a losing run. When it comes to the cost of living crisis, there is one key statistic to keep an eye on here. It's inflation, the rate at which the average shopping basket of goods and services goes up each year. And, well, you can see the big picture here. This goes back the past decade. And just look at how much that line has gone up, over 10% just recently. It's come down from 10.1% to 9.9%. So a little bit of good news there. Primarily, though, it's because of petrol prices. Petrol prices pushing that down uh, quite a lot. But if you strip away all of the volatile stuff like energy, like food, you're left with this. This is core inflation. It's worth just looking at because it gives you a sense of just the underlying strength. In a week of drama, a day of jeopardy. The UK now facing what looks increasingly like a financial crisis, with the Bank of England taking extraordinary steps to secure the plumbing of the economic system. We don't normally spend much time talking about long-dated government debt, for good reason. It's pretty dull. And it's dull because this is where pension funds put their money. But over the course of the past few days, it has been anything but dull. Since the Chancellor's statement on Friday, there's been a chain reaction running through that market, which the bank has detected was causing a run dynamic, a kind of wholesale version of what happened to Northern Rock. So they worked through the night and came up with an unprecedented package. The last Prime Minister to uprate benefits with inflation, you don't seem minded to do that. We haven't made a decision on that issue well, you, yet. You, you My are priority the Prime is Minister, I've said. So you decide. I mean, you, you seem but minded. Not... You're, you're the Prime Minister. You said you're going to uprate pensions by inflation. You're the Prime Minister. I'm saying to you, you don't seem minded to do that. We haven't made a decision on that issue yet. Well, you could decide. The you focus could say to been... me now, yes, I've decided I think it should be uplifted by inflation. Well, I can so assure you're, you're that hiding... any announcement would be made to Parliament, uh, not on Sky Well, News, you, you made the announcement on the pensions uplift, not to Parliament, didn't you? The triple lock. What started as a currency crisis in the city is having a direct bearing on the lives of households around the country. Their hopes for prosperity, for home ownership, now under threat. For Rebecca, higher interest rates are another obstacle to owning a home. You've got all the house prices that have soared. You've then almost got a chance, but everything goes to auction. Um, you've got a lot of products that came onto the market originally, but now they've all been taken off the market. There just seems to be so many hurdles. And for me personally, it just feels like a never-ending battle. Now, the British pound has fallen to its lowest level ever against the US dollar. In early Asia trade, sterling fell to $1.03 before regaining some ground to around $1.06 as the London markets opened. The pound's fall follows a frosty reception by the markets. Uh, it's something that's unfortunately been potentially brewing for a while and if you look at the fundamentals of the British economy, we, we, we spend more than we earn, so there's a growing government budget deficit. We're only 30 kilometres downriver from London's financial district, but little of the capital's wealth flows here to Gravesend. This historic maritime town bears the scars of the recent pandemic and now a cost of living crisis fuelled in part by the war in Ukraine. Faye Crystal runs a cafe and a market where business after business has shuttered up shop. I've not wanted to put my prices up. I haven't put prices up since we opened two years ago. Uh, but with the fuel costs and now the supply issues, um, because I do all my own home baking, flour has nearly doubled in price, sugars went up, everything's increased. They're soaring bills for two years, which was announced by Liz Truss before Queen Elizabeth had died. It's estimated that that plan could cost around $170 billion in the end. It's hoped that the latest support package will avoid mass bankruptcies and job losses across a wide range of industries. The ultimate cost of this plan 
depends on what happens to wholesale market prices between October and April, which is when the support is currently set to expire, although it will be reviewed. Yes, that's right. Uh, inflation and the uh, consumer price index measure came in at 9.9% in August. That was down from 10.1% in July. Slightly unexpected. The market had been looking for around 10, 10.1%. This is actually the first drop in inflation that we've seen since September last year, since September 2021. Now, the key reason behind it was a drop in petrol prices during the month. They fell by around 14.3 pence. For those who run businesses, even those doing pretty well, the challenges seem to be coming from all angles, from the falling pound, which makes imports more expensive, to the cost of, well, everything else. Well, inflation is a sort of a triple-edged sword, if you like, because you've got the impact on supply chain and uh, you know, the way that we bring goods into the business and trying to protect our customers from that. But absolutely the impact on demand because customers feel as though things are more important. Even if we're trying to protect them, our average price has only gone up by about 5%. Now, Goldman Sachs, one of the leading US financial service companies, has some grim analysis for the United Kingdom. The financial firm says inflation in the country could exceed to as much as 20% next year if oil prices fail to cool down. Now, Goldman Sachs ex expects the price cap to increase by over 80% and headline inflation to peak at 22.4% if the gas prices remain elevated at the current level. The research agency also claims the possibility of recession in the UK by the fourth quarter of the current financial year. Now the BOE expanded its bond buying after UK bonds sold off again yesterday, led by inflation-linked notes. The Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng, meanwhile, is set to present revised fiscal plans on October 31st. His second attempt follows a package of unfunded tax giveaways that sent markets into a tailspin. I think in, I think in the UK, and I was just in Europe two weeks ago, they're at the center of both the energy crisis and inflation. And so when you think about what the UK governments have to do and their monetary, so they need monetary policy and they need fiscal policy, and right now they're at odds with each other. And so that's why you saw late last week the significant decline in the currency. So it drops a little, you know, and that's good news if we're all looking for, for inflation to fall back. Uh, it drops a little, so 9.9%, that's much, well, it's less than 10.1, it's less than the 10% that there was the survey. But there's a slightly more worrying trend in core, I suppose, and a lot of the forecasts suggest it'll be back up in October. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wouldn't call 9.9% infl you know, inflation good news in, mm. in any sense of the world, given that the target is, is two. The look at the headlines here now, Jazeera now. We've got some breaking news from the UK. Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng has resigned less than six weeks into the job. He was asked to step aside by the Prime Minister. Let's go straight to Jonah Harley's outside. Uh, remember, just 24 hours ago, Kwasi Kwarteng was in Washington at a meeting of the International uh, Monetary Fund, its annual meeting. Meeting. He gave an interview there. He was asked whether there was going to be a U-turn on the budget, whether his job was in trouble. He said there is no change of thinking on the budget and I'm going nowhere.